Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Healing Home. I'm your host, Michelle, and today we are joined by Daria and Jeffrey of Finding Polaris. But before we get into it with these guys, I want to remind everybody that for all things Healing Home, you can head to michelleshealinghome.com, where there you can find my blog, my online store, you can sign up for my monthly newsletter, you can find out more about me and the podcast. And I also want to give a really nice shout out to all the patrons out there. Thank you guys so much for all your continued support. It is helping me to keep the wheels turning over here at the Healing Home. Now, a little bit more about my guests today. Daria and Jeffrey are the creators and instructors of their wilderness community, Finding Polaris, where they, quote, guide you in learning to rely deeply on your innate listening and tracking skills to tune into nature's subtle, subtle keys or key, yeah, cues, sorry, leading you to wholeness and truth, end quote. You know, they also are parents who embarked upon the journey of free birth to bring their first child into this realm. Now, I'm quite excited to get to know them better and learn more about finding Polaris and their journey of a more self-reliant lifestyle. And I have to give credit to my fiance, Mario Garza of Symbolic Studies for introducing me to these two from Finding Polaris because he recently was featured on their podcast as well. And he passed their information along to me. And as soon as I started researching them, I'm like, Oh, I really want to interview them, have them on The Healing Home. They also have a really wonderful episode on Crow 777 Radio, episode 545, where they go into in depth into their free birth story and experience, which is really awesome. And I highly recommend that if you want to learn more about that, which we'll get into a little bit today. But we're going to focus more on their wilderness training and all the cool, awesome things that they're doing up in Canada. So without further ado, help me in welcoming Daria and Jeffrey to the stream. Hello, how's it going? <laughs> Great. Good to see you guys. Thanks for being here in the healing home. No problem. I got, I want to make a comment. Are you recording in your garage? So I can see all your vehicles behind you on the wall there. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, you noticed. Yes. My three precious vehicles. <laughs> I love that. That's like the best comment I've got about my brooms ever. So thank you. <laughs> yes. I fancy the brooms. They find their way to me. I swear. I mean, I've purchased some of them, but I've had numerous people over the years, like gift me brooms or they found one at the thrift store. I find them at the thrift store. They end up just kind of like making their way. So I have some weave with them. That's for sure. So <laughs> I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> Well, how are you guys doing today? I want you guys to also uh, have a chance to introduce yourself, uh, introduce yourselves and tell people where they can find you as well. Um, and yeah, welcome to the Healing Home. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Want, you. you want to do the... I could, yeah, I can do it. So we're called Finding Polaris Wilderness Community and we're actually a nonprofit that I started, I think we're going into our fourth year this year which is exciting to see growth, you know, in some ways we're still quite fresh, but we've been offering more and more every year and our offerings look like online e-courses, in-person stuff. And yeah, we focus on, you know, our main thing is we say beyond survival, because of course, Jeff and I are very passionate about the harder survival skills. We teach friction fire, you know, plant ID foraging, um, kind of like survival situations with, shelters and how to filter water and we also teach things like barefoot hiking and grounding and um you know awareness skills sit spot so you know some people might call those softer skills so community building truth speaking all these things that for us are just totally inseparable like you can't separate a survival skill situation to understanding your own mental pattern or your own mental patterns you know and so we're we're creating an experience where people can show up to both so you learn hard skills we love teaching them and also you get to you know deepen your connection to yourself and also to the natural world by just getting more and more lenses of awareness to to add to your life yeah, beautiful. And, oh, go ahead, continue. Oh, and I was just saying, if people want to find us, I didn't <laughs> share that part, but you can, our main website is findingpolaris.org and we're on 
pretty most of the socials at finding Polaris WC for a wilderness community. Yeah, I love it. I mean, you guys, it's I was just I've been going through your website, getting to know you a little bit more on the virtual uh, side of things. And I'm just like, holy crap, this is awesome. I kind of wish you were closer to me. <laughs> so we could hang out a little more, but I'd love to come up to Canada at some point. But your qualifications, your focus, um, I love the fact that you're incorporating, like you said, this pattern recognition that is so important to find in our own lives. Because you're right, it's it's almost impossible to be doing these harder skills where you're challenging yourself in these ways, like in survival mode, it being in the, just being in the woods in general, hiking, you know, you're going to be faced with your own shadow a lot of times when you're doing these things. And it may come across as just like needing to pay attention more to the trail so that you don't, you know, sprain an ankle or something. And there's such a different mode that, you go into when you're in the wilderness that, you know, people aren't faced with in everyday life if they're not choosing to put themselves in that mindset. But the amount of shadow work that can be put brought out when you're putting yourself in these situations is pretty awesome. And it's really cool that you see that and you feel that and you incorporate it in your work, you know, and I, I, I have a feeling that you've probably uh, helped a lot of people just like get to the next level on so many different levels, whether it be wanting to learn how to start fire uh, or, you know, conquering their own uh, patterns that are popping up for them. Yeah, for sure. And I think, so Daria is more the survival expert, outdoors, wilderness skills. And I came more from a health background. And I think it's similar to the, the health world where, you know, we can have all the supplements, you can have all the herbs, the, you know, the, the devices, that's all great, but you can't separate it from the mental, spiritual side. And not to say that some people do separate those things, but oftentimes, I guess it's not advertised. When you're looking at wilderness skill stuff, it's like, come do a survival skills thing. And it's kind of, I don't know if, if, if it's just, um, they just assume like the, 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 the instructors just assume like, you know, that's going to be part of it. But I think it, it, a lot of times people forget that, like, you can't separate that. Like you said, like, you know, if you sprain your ankle outside and you know, the herbs and all this stuff, but like you get deadly afraid of nightfall and then, you know, fear starts going and then you're doubting yourself or, you know, you panic and you don't stay caught. Like, so, or, you know, maybe you're just, you're in a bad place with yourself at that time spiritually you know and you're going through hard times and now you're just kicking yourself while you're down so you can't you can't parse those two things like this the spiritual the mental emotional with the like hard skills like, like friction fire like that's all got to be part of that whole package and i think that's like one of our strengths go ahead yeah and i would also add you know when we teach something like water for example water is a massive topic because water is life in so many different ways even when we're making medicines you know the quality of your water is so important and you know we'll teach how to find wild water how to drink clean water in a survival situation and we very clearly talk about when you go home what water are you drinking there you know we want to educate people around tap water so it's not just this I think people feel a disconnection to nature when they're in their, you know, if they're living in a city or in a house and they feel like, oh, wow, I can't drink spring water if I, you know, live in the downtown of a large city or something like that. And we start bridging those gaps as well. It's like, yes, we love our survival situations and our remote spots that we have, you know, where there's no reception. We love that. And, you know, we're living in a house now with our baby and we still only drink spring water. So we teach people, no matter where you are, we want you to drink clean water. So that's another kind of example of how we bridge those two where, yeah, that's what we love to do. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I think like the building bridges and being bridges is so important because there's so many people right now too that I think are really hungry for finding more connection and being more grounded. And they're not, there's so many sources now. There's so much information out there. It can be overwhelming to 
kind of parse it out and like, who's better? What should I do? What do I really want? And I think people like yourselves who are looking at it more holistically, which is, I think, one of the best ways you can live life, because I feel like it's such the opposite as of allopathy, where, as you guys know, it's like it's a pill for every ill. It's a Band-Aid. It's just like whatever. Suppress all this stuff. So instead of just giving them one side of the puzzle you're giving them like the whole puzzle and it's up to them to kind of make these connections as well yeah and and then you brought up the free birth and again that's another layer of like how you do anything is how you do everything so if jeff and i are on this quest of like living a sovereign life being closer to our primal bodies to nature to understanding this realm it's like this is totally part of it how could i go and birth in a hospital if, if I'm walking this path and nothing against hospital births at all, but I'm just sharing my perspective where it's just another way that we show up in the way that we li live our lives that shows our values. So the birth was definitely a learning curve, you know, first baby, you know, the learning curve is very steep, but, you know, we, we took, you know, full responsibility of our life of this birth and then we just showed up and that required yes lots of learning education prior to to birthing in this way but yeah it's just you know another way that we demonstrated that same thread of like living in your full power potential finding health through you know different rites of passage and yeah i guess i just wanted to share that as another example i, I would add uh, your name's a great example. Healing home, you know, you want the healing to be at home. It, that's where the majority of it's happening. If you have to go outside the home, so be it. But you're, you've done all you can do there. And it'd be the same with us. It's like bring the nature into your home. It's not just about going out. It's like bring those herbs home. Bring that clean water home. Bring some plants into your home. Bring that mindset. You know, the Wi-Fi shuts off at night or maybe you have a red light and you get in the red light in the morning or whatever it is, like bring the, the, bring that into your home. And mm -hmm. that's a big thing for us is like, don't just, uh, you know, do like a outdoors course and then forget about it. And you, you know, you just go and visit the outdoors, like embody it and make it part of your day-to-day -day life. Have it as a practice, just like you would yoga or healthy eating or anything like that. Yeah, that's brilliant because, you know, just like in your name, Finding Polaris, we want to get into names. It's like these are old primordial traditions that our ancestors like knew and they did all the time. And so that's been one of my practices as an herbalist and just as a person that wants to be in tune with nature is that doing exactly that, bringing nature into the home, specifically at season changes, you know? So like we just came into spring. So what's blooming right now, you know? Uh, even just bringing grasses or whatever it is in your area that's blooming, bringing it in, making a bouquet. You're working with the cycle of of nature and you're tuning into that a little bit more putting these little reminders around your home just to have that connection super important and you know the free birth thing too one of the things i wanted to just commend you guys with after listening to your crow episode just your fearlessness your determination to do it and I, honestly i bet you have you probably were uh, you know i'm sure there was intimidating moments there was second guessing as you're doing it or whatever but the way you speak of it is so inspiring that i hope that people who listen to that episode if they do are just inspired to maybe take the path that you did because it really um hearing you talk about the fact that you chose to stay out of the system then the system was like okay fine you can't even come to us if you have an emergency whatever and you're like all right sweet but like i really if you want to kind of go into it a little bit about the detail of what I found intriguing was the three um, times where you would have been told, all right, it's time to go to the hospital. And you just held strong and was like, no, my body's going to do this and show us exactly what we need to do. So maybe if you just kind of briefly want to go over that, because I think it's really inspiring and it could help someone else that might be on the fence about free birth and what that looks like. Yeah. I mean, 
where do I even start? It's such a big topic. But one thing that really grounded me throughout the whole process was like, okay, my body knew how to conceive this baby. My body knew how to grow organs, you know, create life, create the placenta. I wasn't thinking about that process. And in some ways, I would tell myself like, okay, the birth is actually kind of easy, you know? Like my body, just like it knew how to grow an entire organ and being, my body is now just going to go through that same innate intelligence and create, you know, this being will emerge from me. And I think that really rooted me in my myself. And I, I, I would yeah. constantly say, like, you don't get to, you know, whether you believe it or not, you don't get to 7 billion people. If every second of uh, like every second one dies or like, you know, it's all a tragedy. And like, I would say, I tell her like everyone, you know, was born. Yeah. So it's like, if you like, there's definitely a lot of deprogramming mm -hmm. and a lot of audio podcasts, uh, video stuff, like a lot of learning to deprogram that to uh, dissolve the fear. But like after the fact, just like reinstating our power or our beliefs and just being like, yeah, like everyone, you know, was born like your friend, your mom, everybody, you know, they were born and they're alive. Their mom's probably not dead. They're not dead. So it can't be that bad. And there's 7 billion of us. So it can't be that crazy. So, yeah. And I would add like the biggest thing around free birth when women are introduced to it, the biggest thing is like, what if? And to be honest, it's like, what if someone dies? That is like the biggest fear um, that comes up for mom, for baby. And I think I would just add that like when we've done so much work, Jeff and I, through our own rites of passage, through the way that we show up in our life day to day, that I didn't necessarily have that fear. Like, yes, I was preparing myself to, you know, be in, you know, the most vital state of my own health, preparing my space to protect the birth for, so my physiology couldn't unfold. But I was never scared of, of death. And I think that's a portal that a lot of people still are working with. And I think it's one of our greatest teachers. And I still definitely was working with my own teachings during this pregnancy and during the birth. But it didn't scare me if that, yeah, if that makes sense. And once again, just like the health aspect, if you want to cure your cancer naturally or fix your leaky gut or, you know, you decide that I'm taking on this thing naturally with homeopathics or DMSO or whatever it is, like you've got to have um confidence and feel empowered in yourself or it's not going to work so it's, it's almost the same thing it's just having sovereignty and and knowing that you can do it not being prey to the fear like oh uh you know i have xyz disease and i'm gonna try to treat it myself but then the whole time you're doubting yourself and like should i go to the hospital should i go to the hospital you're just fighting your you're fighting yourself yeah d totally Daria, were you going to say something else? Well, I was just going to say it was also an opportunity, like speaking of plants and medicine, it was an opportunity for me to be like, okay, if I do have the fear of hemorrhaging, well, what plants can help me? What plants can help me, you know, as new allies in my postpartum journey? And I definitely, mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. not like we went into this as like, oh, I'm just going to see what happens. It was like, no, I did a lot of learning you know, reading and Jeff was like my main support team. So this was an amazing, you know, rite of passage for both of us to be ready and prepared. So I think when you put in a lot of work, you get to reap the rewards of that. Oh, dude. Yes, totally. And that that's such a great thing, too, that both of you were on board with this because I'm there's couples out there that one one person wants to do it this way the other one might be too scared not ready for it you know that this and that and the other thing and i just have to say shisandra is so beautiful and calm and there's something too that i've realized when women who have more natural births or they're very attentive to their diet beforehand and this is like a weston a price sort of 
thing that, that I learned uh, um, just through helping my friends with, with their births was the diet being very crucial to just like how the body, how the babies else. And it's, you can see it. You can tell when you see a baby that has been birthed and every step along the way, like those things were very much at the forefront of the parent's mind and you can just tell and it's so awesome to see and it's just really awesome to see her here in the stream and thanks for having her with us <laughs> no problem and like we're standing we're all standing on the shoulders of giants and i think mm. that's such an important thing on my journey having mentors and i'm sure you have mentors and like if someone's out there and you know whether whatever it is we talk about like just know that it, this we're not the the pioneers like we're we're standing on the shoulders of so many other amazing people and teachers and mentors so like you just got to get out there find someone you resonate with and just like gobble up for lack of a better term everything they have to say and then just like start embodying it yeah i i wholeheartedly agree and it's like it's just like the ancestry thing you know we're all here to build upon the things that were built before us so that someone after us is going to build upon it and i think the best we can do yeah is be embodying the walking the walk talking the talk and so that's the difference too that i can tell in you guys and there's like i said in the beginning there's so much information out there there's so many people there's a lot of charlatans mixed in. There's a lot of genuine people out there too. And I think it does all come down to the resonance that you feel because not everybody is for everybody. And that's how life goes. It's like, if we all got along, what the hell would be happening? That wouldn't be, I don't think it would be a very great place. You know, I think like we're, there's, there's supposed to be things that aren't as pleasurable and we're supposed to experience pain. We're supposed to experience pleasure. We're supposed to have sadness. It's like, if you don't have those things and a variation of emotions, not only is life kind of boring, but I feel like we're never challenged to become better people. And I think that's kind of, you know, one of the things that I've had to really just be aware of, especially like in the herbalist community uh, throughout my journey of it, like first starting out to now and like kind of parsing things out and seeing how new agey things are or like very just like focused on the light, focused on this. And I would always kind of be like, well, how can we all be in the same room at this conference? And it's all about love and light, but like we're here talking in a class about trauma and who's really, you know what I mean? And, and herbs for trauma. It's like, but when you really get down to it, you guys are all kind of trying to act as though it's not really happening, but you're wanting to instill it and all these things, just very odd things. So I've found it much more comfortable to be able to be amongst people like yourselves who can talk about the dark and the light and see the uh, goodness in all of it, really. Yeah. Make your mess your message is what a, one of our mentors said. Ah, I love that. And I mean, I actually think the the process of growth like there has to be hardship if you're if you're avoiding that then i don't know I, I don't yeah. think you'll actually see results because that's you know the hero's journey isn't someone just like getting everything for free and all of their uh yeah. i don't know their manifestations just so, show up super easily without doing a lot of work like no that, I mean, in my experience in my lifetime, I have not experienced that. And I think that speaks a lot of our work that we do, like they're wilderness skills, but they're, we prefer like rites of passage because, you know, one of our most common programs that we love to, to run is a vision quest. And that's very edgy for people. And Jeff and I are like, yes, that's what we love to <laughs> We love creating that container because it is edgy, but when people are ready to explore those edges, oh, it's just so, it's beautiful, it's real, it's raw, it's messy, um, you know, but that's where the true growth comes. Like people don't ever forget. There's a reason why you'll never forget your vision quest, you know, mm. and with that, like, I don't know, for us, the vision quest is like a very, it's a sober experience. And actually a lot of people who are doing it are, are detoxing in their journey to prepare for their quest from alcohol, you know, any addictions, 
whether that's sugar to cannabis to anything, and they're actually in a process of becoming more clean to show up for their vision quest, where essentially they're fasting, detoxing, you know, getting rid of all these distractions and doing a full, full on solo immersion in nature. So that's, yeah, we love, like, that is my favorite container to hold for people. And it seems that uh, a funny thing these days is it's it's not as sexy as the ayahuasca trip you ah. know, where you can just do your diet show up do your thing it's like it's always interesting something that might be a little more difficult people want to like steer away from and not mm -hmm. to say you know i'm like gonna pigeonhole people or just say like yeah like is this harder than doing ayahuasca i've never done it so i don't know but i know people are more likely to in, uh, indulge in a substance than they are to like go within and like, okay, I'm going to fast and go in the woods and like, this could really suck. And like, it could be uncomfortable. Oh, what am I going to do? Sit around for seven days, you know, and that could be hard. And it's a lot easier to push a button or take a substance or, you know, indulge in whatever social media, read a book, go to a conference, like all these different things. It's easy to mask that, that, difficulty with you know like oh i'm i'm doing this other thing right and i think i think for us it's it's almost like a stripping it's like do you need that knife do you need that tent or can you be in a in a tarp you know it's like do you need whatever it is and we try to strip and strip and strip so that they can go to their like most center of their being they're like purest source and that you know to get to that in our perspective it's a lot of actually like clearing and um like cleaning up and just like creating space for that to emerge because you know we're all programmed and, and kind of cluttered and whatever and we're just working on opening up that that conduit yeah dude that's awesome and one of the things that was really attractive to me about your work that i wanted to talk about is um your the use of your drum and you went through a whole uh, like drum guidance certification. Is that correct? Like even in one of your videos, you have a drum where somebody is blindfolded, you're pounding the drum and they're, you, you know, you're basically leading the way for them to find you. And recently over the past, like, I don't know, two or three months, I've been having dreams with drums and rattles and like shamanic tools and stuff. And I've always been drawn to like the Northern mysteries and magic and stuff like that. And so when, when I saw the drum stuff and your drum work, I wanted to pick your brain a little bit about that and what that looked like for you. And what are some of the experiences people have had with what you do with the drum? Yeah, that's, a, that's another big, big topic. I think what comes up for me right now is you know, going back to that life death cycle and, you know, your drum is a piece of raw hide. The drums that I've made are, are from deer skin. And so like, there it is right there. If you, if you, you know, get your own deer, this is a way that you can honor the, the skin of that animal. And you know, a lot of people don't even want to be in that process, but that is something that we also offer. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a skin of an animal and different animals, their skins have different sounds. Um, yeah, there's so many different ceremonies around making your drum, but I guess to tie it into how we use our drums, um, if we're not teaching people how to make a drum, we use it as kind of that, that source. So in that video, I was um, hitting my drum, playing my drum so that people were blindfolded and walking through the forest barefoot uh, to come to, to that center of, of the drum. And even just like blindfolding people, people not having their sight and relying on all their other senses, that is another like root teaching in our work. And yeah, in that video, that was kind of like the culminating departure for those participants was to, um, yeah, blindfold them, get them to listen to the drum, and then they actually headed home shortly after that. It was really, you know, surreal. It was surreal, and like some one participant just like bawled crying, you know, like to get to that point where you're just fully surrendering, 
you know, working with the blindfold brings up so much for people. Just take your sight away. Boom. People can be triggered and it can be a lot. Um, but yeah, that's what, that's what you saw in that video. I don't know if that answered your question. It's just, there's so much to it. I actually don't even know where to, where to go unless you have something to add. Um, well, like I, I don't know if I have much value to add to that, but just the frequency, the resonance, the, the cymatics, just, especially when you're outside for, you know, six, seven days, you haven't heard music, you know, like just the sounds, I would say were more pure. You, you, you've aligned with a vibration frequency of the forest that, that, you know, you've gotten rid of that hum of the, the factories, the, the road, the tires, the cars, your internet, the smart meters, whatever. And now you're in that hum of nature. And then you have that kind of percussion breaks things up and it really, I think it drives you into your body and then you're blindfolded and they uh, it's called a drum stock. And now you have to navigate your way. And I would say you see a lot of people's comfort level on how they navigate through the forest toward the drum. You know, some people want to just run tripping and falling and stepping on sticks. They're just, they're like, boom, they're, they're, they're gunning it for the drum. And then some people are just, like really gentle and like each step counts and like, Oh, am I going the right? What's in front of me? What is this? And yeah, it's just amazing to see people in their body without that sense of sight and barefoot that, you know, not often we're getting barefoot off trail uh, and you're stepping on sticks and rocks and holes. And, you know, you may have to climb over something or climb under something or around something. Yeah. It's, it's a neat experience. And I think I would just add that, you know, the drum is a, it's actually a, a living being in itself and you need to take care of your drum. So many drums end up, you know, drying out and splitting if people don't take care. There's ceremonies around how to birth your drum. Again, that looks like so many things for different people. And then, yeah, just knowing that like, it's a process of tending. I'm looking over there because my drum is actually like on our altar in the corner <laughs> of the room, but just remembering that you you tend to this, you you feed your drum, you oil your drum. Um, and one of my favorite teachings, you know, after making your first drum is that you gift your first drum away. And ah. even, yeah, actually, that's a teaching that we do in most of our like let's just for lack of a better word, like crafts, like when we're making and creating something. Uh, it's so hard for people too, because there's, there you go, the teaching of attachment, right? And so you make this thing that's your first and you're like so in love with it, like your first drum. And then your teacher says, now you gift it to someone you love. Wow. And, and it's big. Like I get chills just thinking about it because I didn't, my first drum was gifted to me at, you know, a specific time in my life. And the first drum I made, I gifted to, to people who were a family that was really important to me. And yeah, it's just, it's just beautiful to, to work with, you know, skins and animals. And, you know, most drums have like a wood frame. How do you make that? Um, working with the elements is just very real and tangible. And it's, yeah, it's like a lifelong journey of a drum and you get to make it your own and learn songs to sing to share with people it's just like a living entity and and where we're located the the lack of entheogens or psychotropics um the drum was a tool for people here to get into the trance state to have their out-of-body experience you use the rhythmic beat of the drum the um like a sun dance and all these different methods that indigenous first nations people here would use to l separate mind from body and using this rhythmic drumming to get into an altered state to channel to you know uh find their their purpose journey the next step it, that's very big part um for tribes up here and and all over north america yeah, it's such a deep root. And I I love thinking about the gifting of your first drum, but yeah, it almost being like its own living 
being. And that's one of the things that's been so intriguing to me is also the use of it, as you just said, Jeff, to enter trance states, you know, without the use of anything it, except for the rhythm of the drum and your own self and what the attack attachment of the drum is because I always think about the heartbeat and the drum is like it, it yeah. works simultaneously together. And so you're creating this frequency with your own toroid, which is like pulling you further into the toroid of this universe. And then that's the portal. That is a huge portal that can take you in all sorts of places and then spit you out and bring you back in. It's, it's really beautiful. So I've just like, I'm very attracted to the drum and I've been on a quest to make my own drum. And also like, there's a, plenty of people in my life that, that I've been introduced to recently who are like, oh yes, I make drums or I have drums, come over and see them. So it's just been very interesting that I've been having this weave with it. And so I had to just bring it up and, and get your opinions on it and see how that incorporates into your work and, and what people have experienced. But I also want to kind of learn more about you guys and how you started finding Polaris because, um, you know, we all have experiences that lead us to the point where, we're, where we go, okay, I need to make changes in my life and I really want to start finding a different path that's more holistic or more healthy or what have you. So if you want to go into that a little bit of how you guys started it, what that looked like for you and how you did it, because that's one of the biggest hurdles for a lot of people is they might be like, yeah, I want to live off grid, but how do I even start? They don't even know where to start. So if you want to kind of talk a little bit about your journey in that sense, that'd be awesome. I'm just going to add one piece before we move on to that. I'll let Daria, because she's the founder, take that part over. But one of my <laughs> mentors and teachers, um, one of the things he uh, communicates with people is, when did you stop singing? When did you stop dancing? And that's a, 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 a an old technique from old sages to find out, you know, when did this problem with your health or your life or your soul, your spirit start was when did you stop singing? When did you stop dancing? And just like you said, you bring that drum back in your life. It's, 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 it's so many things. I don't want to get into it, you know, but like singing and dancing and making music, that is like the soul spirit thing. Like, yeah, that is, a necessity and you don't notice until you're not doing it. Yeah, I would agree with you. That's really great because I, in hindsight, can see myself and remembering times when I did stop singing and then really like sinking into that and seeing what was going on in my life and then realizing, oh my God, like how have I, how have I abandoned this? such a big part of my life and music and singing and voice has always been a big part of my life. And then realizing what I was going through at that time and going, Oh my God, well, no wonder why it was really hard. <laughs> no wonder why it was harder than it normally is. Life is usually always hard. You know, there's hardship all the time, but yes, that's really great. And that's a really good message. I really enjoy that for sure because it is something that's so important and the liberation that comes from just, projecting your voice if, even if you don't have a quote unquote good voice it doesn't matter like those are the things that don't matter and that's the those are the things that nature doesn't care about it's just the actual act of doing mm -hmm. it and getting over that fear of someone judging you for being off tune or you know all the things that society projects on us that you're supposed to sing with a perfect voice and it's always in tune and blah 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 it's like yeah well a lot of those people that sound like that are in a studio and they're not they're not you know it's not really always natural but yeah anyway so i love that thank you for sharing that <laughs> Well, I guess, yeah, I guess I can start with like how it came to be, how Finding Polaris came to be. Um, hmm. Yes. Again, it's like, where does the story begin? <laughs> it's a tricky thing. But I think a, a big piece that impacted the direction of my life was the death of my dad um, when I was quite young. And I had a hard time working for other people to fall into like a classic job situation. I still like, I always loved to work, but it looked more like I'd work on a farm and then I would maybe do something in the winter and then I would travel and then I'd work 
on a farm again and all of that. Um, so I went to university, studied environmental science, really didn't, you know, I learned what I needed to learn at that moment in my life. Then I actually hiked the Pacific Crest Trail. So I came through Washington. Uh, that was in 2017, right before my dad passed. And after that, I just couldn't go back. And so I was finding my own way. I loved being outside. I mean, who doesn't? And I knew there was medicine for me with deepening my connection to nature. So then I ended up finding Wilderness Awareness School, which is actually in Washington State. And I did their adult program. Then I went to teaching drum out, outdoor school, a totally different experience in terms of like uh, like wilderness education. They both had two different styles and I found my own way through those two schools of like, okay, there were things about this structure of programming that I really did thrive and then and then parts that I didn't. And so from those two experiences and a few others, of course, I did my own vision quest um, in Vancouver and then I went to Wildem uh, Wisdom of the Earth in, in Vancouver. So I just really exposed myself to a lot of different, <laughs> to a lot of different uh, styles of teaching, styles of connecting to the natural world. And then um, I created my own version of, of what, you know, works for me and for us. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear her. Can I you? I can. She's very, she's very satisfied as we all remember those feelings, I'm sure of the, the deep rootedness of being connected to mother like that. It's like probably euphoric and we don't even remember what, what she's experiencing right now. So go for it, Sajandra, go for it. <laughs> Feel it. Oh, that's so funny. Um, so yeah, actually I, um, had a really strong hermit archetype. So I started the nonprofit and then just went and hid in the woods. And, you know, we can laugh about it now. So this is prior to meeting Jeff. So I was living in a hundred square foot bunkie off grid, totally solo. You, you know, you had to walk to get to the bunkie where I was living. Um, and I was running at that time, like full on month long immersions. So people had to come and stay for me, stay with me for a month. And my website was horrible. Like I had very little online presence and um, Jeff ended up finding me. And this was like the, you know, what I learned with our relationship with masculine and feminine and just like allowing just for myself, breaking free of my hermit archetype and playing around with different archetypes and just, just like enjoying the diversity and beauty, the beauty of how we can show up. Um, Jeff definitely showed me my darkness and he was like no one's gonna come <laughs> no one's gonna come to you if they don't know you exist and so jeff brought this different perspective which was really awesome about like how you don't have to be so extreme like i was only wearing natural fibers at the time like i was very extreme which i'm grateful for those moments in my life like they really brought a lot of character and confidence. And, you know, I, I knew I really didn't have to, I could be so happy and content with so little, but then Jeff, you know, highlighted some different perspectives and we found our middle way and she was sleeping. So she had her bunkie. <laughs> it had a bison hide in it on the hardwood floor. And she didn't sleep in there though. She slept outside under the cedars in, <laughs> um, I don't know if I could describe it for people, but imagine your classic uh, like uh, triangle tent, but it was just a bug mesh. Oh, wow. And then she's such a minimalist <laughs> that she didn't even have, I don't even think she had a full sleeping pad. It yeah. was like pieces cut up. So it was just like nothing on the ground just bare ground her couple little sleeping pads like in the silhouette of her body and then <laughs> like a sleeping bag and this bug mesh so she didn't even sleep indoors when i met her so she had a building didn't sleep in the building and then i came along and i was i was training martial arts um every day and my thing was like i love this bison hide but like i've done the hard things for the day I don't need to sleep on the wooden floor. I'm like, I need to be calm. 
and you know like i get i love being hardcore don't get me wrong like i'm also um i don't want to say stubborn but i can get off on that as well like how Exploring how much suffering can i in, endure but it was like oh my gosh like i can't do the the bison hide on the wood floor and i remember i brought <laughs> like a foam pea whatever polyethylene foam fiber thing like a two inch thick rolled up mat for like camping or glamping and i'm like hey like, well we can put this under the bison hide and like the the dirty look i got was like <laughs> whoa we just crossed the line <laughs> but it, oh. you know a week it's so it's such a good story now you know and we both we both got to see different parts of ourselves and play around with that. And, and it wasn't just it. her. Like she pointed things out with me. I was the, the weekend warrior. I'd always, um, always worked a full-time job, uh, a, a career in the trades. I'm a tradesman. Um, so I would get on the weekends and live it up, do, you know, the most extreme things I could, you know, camping, canoeing, hiking, climbing, all these different things. Never, never a, you know, full, full, fully into it. But then I was also, I'm a big health nut and my passions and everything I've done and study has all been in the health realm. And with her, it was like, she'd be like, Oh, here's that plan. Like, Oh, I've heard of that. And I've heard of all these plans. I've heard of everything. I never touched it and never ate it and never used it. But I was just like, uh, uh, what do they say? PhD piled higher and deeper. I was just full of like, <laughs> empty like an empty vassal with just useless uh, uh um like info points and just like little factoids that don't really matter because i have no basis in actual experience and daria had all the dirt work time where i was like mm. oh this wild plant i've heard of that i've never seen it oh this thing cool like oh you do that neat and but like here i am i've never done any of it and you were also the one who opened up like where we are now, we would not be where we are now if Jeff didn't present the kind of business and um, yeah, just that whole vision of outreach. And, you know, we want people to show up and like for me not to say small, because I was definitely hiding that that was very for my own whatever self protection mechanisms at that moment in time in my life. And I think that's, you know, the beauty of diversity, like, you know, we were speaking to and and then finding our own way through that. So now we bridge Jeff's, you know, he's so knowledgeable about like just food, health, nutrition, primal movements, primal patterns, how to structure your house to essentially support natural rhythms. Um, and then I have more of this other perspective that I bring into like more the dirt time or survival skills experiences that kind of thing but we're both teachers at heart so we're both still growing still expanding our skills so that we can offer more and we're also i think um you know as we all are i think in our businesses and our offerings it's we figure out what people want what works and like where where it also you know we can be of greater service and then we're just refining and refining and refining and it's really it's fun we're yeah. past the money is icky and and it's, I, I know I went through it and then she went through it, but it's like, oh, I don't want to like, oh, charging money. And I, it's like, uh, uh, and like, I think the new age did a big disservice to oh. health and spirituality and anything on the alternative. Cause like we were joking on another podcast, uh, with a gentleman who he specializes in interviewing and teaching the business end to forest educators is the, the term he uses. And we joke around, we're like, yeah, like, where the heck's the, like, wilderness Jeff Bezos? Like, we're <laughs> waiting for him. Like, I'm, like, the first person, like, I, I'm okay with, like, the Lamborghini and also, like, lots of time outside. But, like, someone has to do it. Someone's got to be the billionaire off of this stuff to make a model that it's, like, how else are you get everyone to make the change? It was like the natural health world seen it. We got supplements, we got practitioners, like it's there. The alternative starting to see it now because we've got people like you, Crow, all these people like starting to break through and say, hey, you can make your living helping people or entertaining or edutaining. And it's like, yeah, we got to get past this, like 
get the sh the shackles off and hey you can get rich you can make lots of you can if you provide value there's nothing wrong with receiving value back so like yes. yeah I'm, i'd like to see well, the first jeff bezos <laughs> you know the billionaire <laughs> for like the the real deal stuff that needs to save humanity because if there's not a price tag on it no one's gonna care because the truth is, it's actually, you know, it's a very rare person who's willing to show up for our offerings that, yeah. you know, we work with this a lot where it's like, we're, we're not going to change our, how we host, how we show up. Like we're not going to, yeah, we're going to stay in our, our truth with like our ethics and values. And most people will not come. Most people are not ready for a vision quest. Most people don't want to you know, just disconnect from their phones for three days. Most people are right. terrified of sleeping outside in Northern Ontario where there's, you know, moose, bear, coyotes, wolves. Like most people, that's so terrifying, they would never even show up. So, but that being said, like what you mentioned in the beginning is what we found is the people we get is because we're living it authentically. We're not just mm -hmm. saying all the right things. And this is like almost a conversation daily in our lives is like, why are people faking it? Like, why aren't they just being authentic? It's like, we were just sick a week ago. Like we got warm weather feeling awesome. And then it got cold again and we just detoxed. Uh, so it's like, we're not going to hide that. We're not going to, you have to be authentic. You have to say like, Hey, I was an idiot growing up. Like I went through my twenties. I was retarded. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's the truth. I don't like, a, a thing in my life is radical honesty. And I think a lot of people go through our programs and they, I might come off as brash or a little crazy, but then I'll, I'll open up and I'll tell them something that they're like, Oh my gosh, like, wow. And then they can relate. And it's like, yeah, I'm not going to hide that from you. Like, here's my deepest, darkest, shadow stuff because mm. you need to know i'm just like you i'm not better i'm not worse it's just like here's the terrible things that happen to me i can see it on your face that there's terrible things that happen to you and like that's why you're at a program and then it makes it yeah. relatable and it's people see us and they're drawn to us it's like oh you're drinking the spring water it's like you're doing this like yeah we have values that we're not gonna just fold on for anything and we're gonna keep those values at, at the, the highest point and that's paid off because, you know, we got to talk to Crow. We were meeting all these amazing people, getting these connections. And then people who are, are drawn to us because who, who we are, instead of us having to be something that the niche wants or, you know, like, believe it or not, there's a, like a standard or not a standard, but like, there's almost a conventional outdoors thing. You know, it's like, we can break with the convention. We can be yeah. alternative. We can be woo woo or these different things you don't need to be you know fit in this cookie cutter yeah i love that we're going here oh go ahead daria oh i was just gonna share well i actually spoke about this recently looking back so when i met jeff i i was living very close to nature i was very active i was you know eating well i'm gonna air quote all this but uh, I was also struggling with gut irritation, hormone disbalance. I had pushed myself so hard. One of my wilderness experiences, I lost my cycle, my menstrual cycle for three months. And wow, that was me pushing myself past my extremes. I fasted a lot. Um, and again, none of these practices are bad in and of themselves, but it's definitely part of my story that I pushed myself so hard as a woman um, that, yeah, when I met Jeff, it was just a really different perspective. And he helped me a lot on my own healing journey. And I mean, I have so many stories of like why that showed up. I think part of it, like being um, like a, just a solo woman at the time, I was trying to embody both masculine and feminine. And when I met Jeff and was able to let the masculine side then be expressed in a, in a healthy way, in a relationship, then it was like this opportunity for me to not have to be that, the, to express those positive. I do believe they're positive qualities of the masculine energy, but I really, um, yeah, was not well. I, 
I lost like 40 pounds from meeting Jeff in the past, like what, like three, three and a half years. And it was to just let myself to, I don't even think I ever fasted after meeting him. Cause Jeff was like, Hey, I think your body's in like a fight or flight mode. And here's like another perspective of this, these survival skills, you know, where it's like, yeah, you actually don't want your body to be living in that state. And my body was because I, I pushed myself so much. And so Jeff brings in that awareness too of kind of like a sustainable holistic lifestyle where I, I can and have been in the past a little extreme and I'm grateful for those moments. And also I wouldn't be here if I, yeah, didn't get to learn and integrate and going back to like, yeah, teaching these experiences and these, these ways of, of being, whether you're like in a rite of passage and also your day to day, because they're, yeah, they're just not inseparable for us. <laughs> yeah, that's really awesome. And you know, when I love hearing this, this balance that I always love seeing in couples when it's a healthy, like balanced, holistic relationship, these are the things you hear. This is the kind of stuff that comes through. And I have very similar experiences to you, Daria, with Mario, him pointing these things out about me and me being a solo woman that was always more in my masculine side of having to just feel that, you know, and it wasn't until meeting Mario and be being in a healthy relationship with a man who valued a woman who wanted a woman who valued herself, that I was able to see those things of in, in me of what I was kind of missing out on basically and not embracing and walking in my full power because of that, you know? And yeah. so I, I just, I always love hearing the dynamics of couples in that way and how we point these things out to each other uh, that we're observing and yeah. as hard as it can be sometimes to hear this stuff, you know, it's like, man, you sit with it though. And you got, you just, you have to be like, you know what? They're totally right. And yeah. it's that moment when you can admit it instead of getting defensive and getting yeah. mad at them. And then it becomes an argument and there's so much ego involved with people that they're, it's like an imbalanced, improductive ego when the person that loves you is just like, I'm just trying to help you. And that's always the thing that I try and remember when things like that come up, I have to step back and just be like, he's literally trying to help me be more self-aware. And that is like one of the most beautiful things that I think we can do for each other, whether it's a romantic relationship or a friendship or whatever. You know, I, there's moments in life where I step back and I remember friends of mine who stopped me and was like, hey, I'm telling you this because I love you. I'm noticing this about you. And if you want to, you know, move through this, you might want to think of A, B, and C. And it's like just really honoring that when it happens in your life instead of rejecting it, I think is super valuable. And obviously you guys are doing that and you're integrating it into your work and it's just beautiful to see. So thanks for and sharing all that stuff. Yeah, and realizing if you're out there listening, it's like, it wasn't uh, like luck of the draw it worked the first time. Like clearly we went through relationships and screwed it all up and didn't do this. And yeah. that, like, I think that's such an important piece is like, oh, I look back, I'm like, I was a real piece of crap here. This is where I screwed up there. And like, <laughs> like at least bringing that forward in the next relationship, you'd be like, these are all the things I'm not going to do because I can see all my bad tendencies you know, and not just focus on the other person's faults or bad tendencies. Like, oh no, this is where I screwed everything up in the past previous relationships. So at least you're not bringing that forward. Like you better learn, to, if you didn't learn something from the last relationship, you're just going to keep repeating it. So mm -hmm. I think that's a big part. It's like, like I said, with the radical honesty, like when we met, it was almost like, it was almost like a board meeting and like a, a merger acquisition. It's like, put everything on the table put all the dirt, like, here's all my good things. Here's my no, like non-negotiables. Here's all the, the terrible things about me. Now you go. Okay. <laughs> it's like, definitely like, it's a no, if you do this. Okay. It's a no, if you do that, but it's a maybe if you do this. So like cut to the chase, like the, 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 the um, what do you call it? The honeymoon stage is great and all, but like, you want to cut through that bullshit, like really fast. Yeah. And also we can't hide it. We, we mm. host our programs together. You know, we're all living, like 
depending on the program, you know, we're intense, we're eating all together. Like you can't hide that. Our baby is going to be in, you know, present in all of our events. So, you know, the way that I raise my child will, it's just right out in the open. You know, I'm not here to host an event and then pass my kid off to another person for the 10 days. Like we obviously, we, we find ways and support and such so that we can all be present and, you know, hold, hold our space. But um, yeah, we're definitely in as a couple in, you know, we're doing this together. So we can't, we can't hide the way that we interact or like work together or, you know, if a clash happens or a conflict happens, people get to see all of it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I bet you've inspired other people to kind of like understand how to better deal with things like that. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever have other couples come and work with you guys or have, what is it usually just individuals? We've never with had the a programs, no. I think outside of the programs, we attract a lot of couples. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But I, I, less that they, I think it's we meet people and then we attract them and they end up like becoming friends more so than them coming on to. But no, no couples yet. No. Because I think I think a uh, a lot of our retreats kind of call to someone to go through something. Mm. So they're more likely to say like, Hey, like I'm going to do this, honey. Like this is my, you know, my, uh, right. soldier and, or, or their, what were you to say? I would say like the hero's journey of the rite of passage. Yeah. Yeah. Generally, generally speaking, like more individual. It doesn't yeah. have to be, but there's components to it. Mm -hmm. uh, that makes sense. And uh, so where you guys are located, do you have a network of other people that are doing some of the same things? Or are you kind of like beacons of light in this arena? So we have, there's another couple that lives like an hour or so from us. They do different type of programming, but they're wilderness skills teachers as well. And they do uh, retreats and trips and stuff. Um, I would say it's probably speckled yeah. around Ontario and Canada. But I think it all depends. It's they're all so niche that I think we're kind of more in our own lane, I suppose, for lack of a better term that I can't think of right now. But like what our style and what we're doing, some other people might be doing the wild food, wild mushroom fungus stuff, or you know the the hard bushcraft skills, and but they focus more on that. Mm -hmm. you know or like the survival stuff well, or just trips and stuff where we're kind of trying to bring the i don't know bring bring the the like, humans back to nature like back back to a, a holistic view with with this realm i mean yeah. even in my story like i traveled to the u.s there's a lot if if like the like the big wilderness schools are actually mostly all in the US and that was part of my path. So I went there, you know, to get those experiences. So in terms of I don't think there's another school like this in Canada from what we know of. There's definitely a lot of little like smaller kind of scale stuff um, popping up where they work with children or um, I, you know, Lure of the North, they do their winter out trips. So everyone has their own unique offering, but most people, and this is what we talk about all the time is that they're, they're hosting like a retreat or like kind of a, almost like a school like experience. So you go there, you learn, you go home, you do whatever you do at home. But what we're presenting is, is more of a life way. So you come, you learn these skills so that you can actually go home and integrate this into your life into the way that you now walk through this, this, you know, earth in everything you do. And I think that's really the piece that separates us from other offerings. There's so many, there's a lot of people doing nature stuff like Jeff, like you can learn animal tracking, wild food, like all this stuff, it's but, endless. but, but how many yeah. of those people are then going to, you know, talk to you about not bringing a Snickers in your backpack or, you know, like, <laughs> like lip, like tap water, living it. Yeah. Know. Like it one of the right. highlights of my life recently has been, so we get gather spring water and we go every couple of weeks 
and the last like three times mm -hmm. we meet people we know and this is uh, about an hour 20 minutes from where we live or from the city that we live in and the city's got about like 150,000 people but like I keep meeting we keep meeting our people there mm -hmm. so it's like mm. that is like it's balancing all the terrible things I did in my 20s and <laughs> teens and all the bad <laughs> karma I built up I'm like I'm <laughs> balancing it out so but yeah like that's what I want to see I want to see like you know if someone taught me hunting or archery or like hunting with a firearm I want to be able to be like hey look I did it like I got my first animal like I want it not to go um like fall on deaf ears and it's amazing to see people like spring water is a huge one for me and now we're seeing our people at the spring every time we go it's like yes like that brainwashing is working and that's like the whole point you want to see people sending you pictures of like look all the raspberries i got or look at the wild apples or like look i've got gathered these herbs or like oh i'm doing this like we're out go to camp for like you want to see the fruits of your labor not just everyone coming for like uh instagram-esque like i did the day class and that was great and i just got my fill for the year like not a fast food experience like a life-changing experience and i think that's yeah been really epic yeah that's so cool and i just i that's my intuition about you guys just even looking at everything and hearing you speak and talking to you today i'm just like dude it's the real deal and i think that there's so many people we're in um like a fast food nation of everybody wants things really fast and you know there's things in your life and i'm speaking from experience that like it might take you to the day you die to get over something or to have to continuously work on it or it's always something that might pop up and it's just it's how you deal with it it's how you react to things that says way more about the situation itself like it could be something very simple or it could be something that's like really devastating but it's all about how you react to it and that's something that's just a consistent thing in my life that i always try and remember and i assume that you guys are in the same boat with that and i think that having people in situations in the wilderness it's definitely like that. It's all about your reaction. It's kind of like how we started the show with, okay, maybe something happens. You're on a trail, you sprain your ankle and it's nightfall. Okay. How are you going to react to that? That's going to dictate your evening. <laughs> like it's going to dictate what happens to you. Um, so yeah. it's, it's all personal choice. And I just, uh, I'm really honored to be able to have had some time with you guys and gotten to know you a little bit better. It's, it's really awesome. And I'm, I'm pumped to continue following your journey and, and, uh, seeing what happens and seeing what you guys are doing. It's really exciting. And I also want to just say that I really appreciate you bringing up the, um, kind of the financial end of things, because that's one of the things Mario and I too had noticed, um, kind of early on with a specifically, if you want to call it the truther movement, like you're almost like meant to feel guilty if you're charging people or if you put an ad out for a product or, you know, whatever it is, like, we're all just supposed to give all this stuff away and act as though it doesn't, we, you know, it doesn't cost us anything to do whatever we're doing or though we don't have an internet bill or, you know, whatever. And it's just like, if you're choosing to be in the system enough to have money and spend money and work in it, you almost have to understand that there has to be some kind of exchange on that level. And I think that that's a lot, that is a new age programming. It's a liberal program that you're supposed to feel guilty about stuff that capitalism is the worst thing in the world. Do I like how things are rolling out right now not necessarily but i do i'm realistic in knowing that if we're going to play this game you have to be able to have these exchanges so thanks for bringing that up too because i think it's almost kind of like sometimes a taboo subject when we're talking about this stuff because people have so much guilt around it you know for sure and i think well, i think even like you can blame it on instagram but you can't because this falsity hollywood culture before the internet it was like display your best and like yes of course but like be human and i think so many people either in the truther or the the like alternative niche whether it's 
alternative health, alternative nature stuff, or like just I'm the nature person or you're a hippie or whatever. It's like everyone's like afraid to be themselves. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, oh, like I got a bit of a belly or like, you know what? I scream every once in a while and I can be a overreactive person. It's like, and everyone's like trying to play a character and then no one, it, it's almost easy. It's almost easier for us sometimes because it's like, yeah, we don't have to pretend this is what we do every day right and like just being authentic and it's like people are just dying for that but it's like and then we see people that we know and appreciate trying to break through to their niche and it's, it's just like why aren't you going out there and like giving your story you're like being authentic like put yourself out there like hey you're not perfect just like the rest of us so tell people you know like we're not going to be afraid to say like hey this is where we screwed up or and it just seems like everyone's trying to put on their best face, but we're all sick of that. And people don't realize it. And then you see people who will put themselves out there and are authentic and open up the veil and put, like pull the curtain back and then people are gobbling it up. Yeah. But then it's like, oh, okay, let's just like, you know, do our little post or like, we won't ask for money. And like you said, it's like, no, like get out there and like give her, you got to, got to make a living and there's nothing wrong saying like hey if you like my stuff here's like what's five bucks a month or whatever and it's like yeah you can't feel icky about that and the more people who make a living doing these things the more viable it's going to be and the better the world's going to be yeah i agree wholeheartedly that's awesome i love it well you guys i'm gonna let you guys uh, carry on with your friday and uh, thank you so much again for being here. And right before you go, uh, just let people know again where they can find you and the best. And if there's any sp specific program you want to plug, go for it. And I'll have all your descriptions or all your links and everything will be in this, the description below as well. But the floor is yours. So thank you so much. So it's findingpolaris.org is our website, which will have, that's the best place to go. It has everything there. We have a lot of free content. Um, so I would say if you're interested, just go check us out. See if see if there's something there for you. In terms of our offerings, um, for people who are further away, definitely um, our weekend survival skills is a great one. And we also have our 10-day vision quest. Uh, those are two kind of largest programs and i would say yeah if you live further away from us those would be the two that are worth the investment of your time and energy to travel oh. and then we have e-courses so we have three e-courses right now one's called awaken your instincts which is a kind of fundamental concepts to rewilding we have a spring water course so how to find source transport, um, wild water, spring water. And then our last one is friction fire e-core. So how, wherever you are in the world, um, yeah, you could make your own friction fire kit and learn how to uh, make a coal. Yeah. And if you sign up to our membership, the first month's free. So you could sign up for the membership, you know, binge the e-courses, see if anything resonates. And then if you don't like it, just cancel the membership after a month. So there's pretty risk free at this point. And then we got a bunch of uh, like fun little digestible content on Instagram. And then we have some longer form stuff on um, YouTube. And then uh, we have the interview with Mario. We're doing uh, stuff we're recording just for now as we kind of figure out the podcast or the interview or whatever the heck we're doing. We're putting that on the membership too. So if you want to find like audio and video stuff, there's, there's a, a bunch of stuff on our membership too for like media. Awesome. Yes. Well, I commend you guys for the work you're doing. Keep it up. It's awesome. And thanks again for being here. I really loved our conversation. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Thank of course. You. Yeah, of course. Anytime. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day. Okay. Bye. 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 All right, everybody. Thanks for being here. This was a lovely conversation. Jeffrey and Daria are awesome and they're doing some great things. And man, I can't wait to, for the next time I can talk to them again. Michelle'sHealingHome.com for all things Healing Home. As you know, you can find my online store. You can sign up for my newsletter. My blog is there. You can learn more about me all over at Michelle'sHealingHome.com. Thank you to all the patrons out there. Chance and Jenny G, Sarah G, Liam, Miri and Hank. Erica, Moonlander, Mary, Louie, Logan, Mickey, Doreen, 
Debbie, Natasha, Mary Beth, Nausicaa, Stephanie, Charlie, Peter, Elise and James, Rachel, and Vanessa. Thank you guys so very much. Patreon.com slash The Healing Home for anyone who would like to join and support over there on Patreon. A handbook for herbal and natural cat care is available up on my website. It is $11 to download, and it's a wonderful introductory guide for doing just what the handbook says, herbal and natural cat care. I also just talked with Chance Garten of the Interverse podcast, which you can find our episode on herbal and natural cat care and pet care over on the Interverse podcast on YouTube. Full Moon Offer newsletter, sign up at the website. You can also read all the past archived issues there. Comes out once a month. Find it under the newsletter tab on michelleshealinghome.com. And the current issue is number 43. I'm offering up my fresh Ellie Campaign root and honey tincture, smoking tobacco seeds, blue vervain seeds, and my skin and wound salvation balm. Up here on the screen, you can see the menu right now with all the pricing. Uh, Just want to say also, I still have some oat and honey soap left and calendula salt soap, which are still available, and you'll be able to find those on my website as well. Full Moon Offering Newsletter next issue comes out April 23rd, while the moon will be full and pink. And next week, I'm going to be sharing with you guys a skin healing salve tutorial. So I'm bringing you back into my kitchen and it's going to be really fun. I'm doing some traveling coming up the next couple weeks. So I've got, I got a little bit shorter shows coming up in the tutorial style for you guys. So I hope you enjoy. Come and check it out on April 9th at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time over at The Healing Home on YouTube. Patreon.com slash Symbolic Studies if you would like to follow Mario over there and show him some support because what he's about to launch is his Symbolic Secrets tarot series. He's starting with the Fool card and he's going to go through the entire Major Arcana and it's going to be awesome. He's doing some deep dives. He's really going to get into it and it's going to be so exciting because I am so excited and pumped for him to be offering this up as an exclusive offering. And him and I actually just did a show on The Healing Home for episode 68 where we talked about the path of the Fool and he did a little bit of a teaser of what he's going to be offering for the Fool aspect and card part of this series. So check that out if you're interested and get a little preview of what you might be able to find over at Symbolic Studies on Patreon. And as always, SymbolicStudies.com for all things Mario. If you would like to learn more about him, check out his Elemental Study Packet. He also has a running blog that's on his website and much more. Go to SymbolicStudies.com for all those things. And with that said, my friends, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for all your continued support and all your comments and lovely uh, insights that you throw up in the chats and down below in the comment section. I really appreciate it. And I just look forward to continuing this journey onward and upward in the healing home. Cheers and take care out there.